Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dreaming AI. My name is Nuked, and today we are going to learn how to perform outpainting with Comfy UI. I'll be very honest, I've spent almost three weeks researching the universal outpainting method, and I hope I've come up with a solution that works well for everyone for now. I've opted for multiple methods within the same workflow, so that you can choose the result that suits you best. In fact, we'll be exploring three outpainting techniques today that I hope will meet your needs. As for the nodes we'll be using, they include the native pad image for outpainting node, the custom nodes of ComfyUI and paid nodes, ComfyUI fit size, and my ComfyUI N-Suite. You can find all the links in the description as always. Let me start by saying that using the native pad image for outpainting node already produces acceptable results. Unfortunately, it has some limitations, especially with images of very low resolution where the final image may appear degraded, particularly in the faces, due to some limitations of the VAE since the face portion is too small for it. In these cases, as we'll see, we can use a node called Image Composite Mast. Uh, you can also try increasing the resolution of the image, but the higher the resolution, the more likely we are to have inconsistencies in the parts added by the model. So you'll need to find a balance. Great. Let's start our workflow with the basic nodes, which include load image, load checkpoint, three K sampler nodes, and the usual two clip text encode nodes. We fill the negative one, while for the positive one, we convert the input text as we'll perform another operation on the positive side. I was tired of having to rewrite it every time while maintaining coherence with the original image so that the outpainting wouldn't go wrong. So I decided to use a very good tagging model called JoyTag, which I just implemented in my suite of nodes mentioned earlier. To use it, we load GPT loader simple, leaving JoyTag as the checkpoint name and connect it to another called GPT text sampler, which will require the image from load images input. Just to show you the result, I connect a node that will show us the generated text and also connect the positive clip we created earlier with joy tag. You can also choose the number of tags shown by modifying the max tags value. But for this example, I'll leave it at 50, which is more than enough. But I want to point out that if you want to use SDXL models, it might be better to use Moondream. This is because unlike the 1.5 models that prefer tags, SDXL models are better at interpreting actual descriptions, something that Moondream is very good at. To use Moondream, simply select that model in GPT Loader and connect a string node to the sampler's input prompt so you can ask the model what you want about the image. Both JoyTag and Moondream will be downloaded on the first execution of the node and therefore do not require further steps to be used, just a little patience the first time. Lava models are also supported, but require a separate download, for which I refer you to the instructions in the README on the official repository. Okay, with that said, let's connect conditioning a model as usual to all the case samplers and continue with our workflow by introducing the node that will perform the rough resize of the image when it's too small. The node is called Fit Image and Resize. When we want to use it, we'll need to enable the upscale and set the minimum size that one of its sides must reach. This node is here just for safety, so I'll deactivate it. And I include it because I find it very convenient to be able to change the image size on the fly to test if the outpainting works better with different sizes. We'll connect the output to the most important node of this workflow, which is the pad image for outpainting, where we can choose how much and where we want to grow our image. Additionally, we can also choose how much feathering the mask created will have. Um, this latter value is very important as it will greatly influence how coherent the model creates between our original image and the generated edges. In this case, I want to increase my image by 184 pixels on all sides, and I want the feathering to be 43. 
Now, as I mentioned, the methods we'll use are three. For the first one, we simply add a VAE encode and a set weight noise mask node to apply our expansion mask to the image's latent. We then use this final latent as input for a first case sampler. Additionally, I set an incremental seed and sampler scheduler and denoise based on some tests I did previously. You can easily change them according to your preference, but remember that the denoise must always be less than one if you want the model to fill the mask using the content of our final latent. Next, we add a V-code and a preview. Um, lastly, we add an image composite masked node to which we connect in destination and mask the outputs of our outpainting node, while in source, we connect the output of the BAE decoder. Uh, moving on to the second method, where I wanted to experiment with two nodes, fill masked area and blur masked area. We connect some preview images for debugging and complete the node exactly as we did for the first flow. Uh, the first node will fill the mask created by our outpainting node with the selected method. Among those available, I prefer Navier Stokes. We'll connect the image and the mask from our outpainting node to this one. The second node will then add blur to this filling. I set the blur intensity to 61, which seemed good enough. Here I always connect the same mask as before, but in the image I connect the output of fill mask area. We leave both falloffs at zero because otherwise it would create a border that would detach the central image from our mask. Perfect. Let's complete the flow exactly as we did before. Finally, let's look at the last method before executing this workflow. A few days ago, in my desperate search for a technique to perform perfect outpainting, I came across a video by a creator named Rob Adams, explaining how to perform outpainting in a way I had never seen before. The video is very interesting, so I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, essentially, this method involves repeating a certain portion of the image taken from the ends, pixelating it, and filling it with noise, then using it as a background for a mask. The result is a kind of image-to-image, -image somewhat like what Phil Nast Area does, but much more elaborate. What struck me the most is that it seems to work really well, which is why I decided to create a custom node that saves me from doing all the steps you see in the video, giving me a very similar result. I say similar because I think I still need to work on it a bit, but for now I'm satisfied. I named the node ImagePad for Outpaint Advanced, as if you want to use this technique, it can replace the stock one. To use it, simply connect the original image as input and select the various parameters as we would have done in the various nodes described by Rob Adams. We have the mask expansion on the sides and feathering like in the official node, noise which is the blend between the cropped and stretched image and a generated noise image, pixel size which identifies how large the pixels of the image pixelation process are, Pixel to copy, which identifies the size and pixels of the portion taken from the image on the sides, and which will be stretched for the entire expansion size. Finally, we have the color correction section, which will only affect the mask part and not the main image. For noise, unlike the video, I noticed that with the method I used, I have to use very small values if I don't want too many details in the final result. For this example, I'll always stay below 0.1. In conclusion, we complete this flow by practically doing the same thing we did for the first one. The only difference is that in the case sampler, I decided to use this sampler and scheduler, and I lowered the denoise to 0.58 as higher values gave me results that I wasn't satisfied with.
All right, give me just a moment to sort out this mess and then we can finally execute our workflow. Okay, let's take a low resolution image as an example, just to show you the issue I mentioned earlier and run our workflow. Uh, starting from the beginning, we can see that the prompt was correctly generated. Uh, moving down, we have outline masks generated by our two final floods. And finally, here are the results. Um, starting with the first one, you can clearly see that the original result has a very degraded face, while in the second column where we applied the composite, it's perfect. This is because the composite simply fills the part not covered by the mask with the original image. However, this results in a more pronounced seam between the generated image and the original one. The second one is also fairly pronounced, but overall good. Remember that the second column is just one of many options to compensate for the degradation of the original image's face as you could very well use nodes like the Face Detailer from Impact Pack to improve it or use InPaint to remove the seam. Now let's move on to the third and final result. This result, in addition to being perfectly integrated, has an exorbitant amount of detail compared to the other two images. The grass, in fact, has managed to expand even beyond the boundaries in a coherent manner, as has the rest of the image. Of course, the original image here is perhaps the most degraded, but remember that it was still a 512 by 512. As I mentioned before, an interesting thing I discovered is that increasing the noise dramatically increases the details. I won't lie to you, I think this method in this specific situation makes the other two seem like failed attempts. Obviously, it doesn't always work. In fact, in the various tests I did, the first two often prove to be better, as the details could sometimes create unintended things in the image, which is why I wanted to keep all three. Also, always keep in mind that all three technique can be improved by adjusting the denoise of the K-sampler or the feather. The model used also plays an important role, and if you are you know, out painting images you have previously generated, you can continue to use the same model to maintain maximum coherence. And that's all for now. In the future, I hope to find other techniques that make out painting even easier, but for now, I'm uh, pretty satisfied with these. Please consider liking and subscribing if you found this tutorial useful. Also, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. And until next time, keep dreaming.